at six, protests on the Capitol steps. There's outrage from those for and against Oregon's cap and trade bill as a Republican walkout holds the legislation in limbo. They deserted their posts. They deserted Oregonians. Rip this bill up and throw it away because it's useless. With more demonstrations planned, we're tracking the latest from Salem. Plus, 26 people are forced out after this fire torches a Vancouver home and duplex. Also, video captures the moment a hot air balloon slams into a crowd of people. And in focus this morning, radio for the blind. We meet the Clark County man broadcasting shows for the visually impaired right from his home. You know, uh, that's my intention is to bring something good and worthwhile to the community in somehow, some way. Those stories and more are coming up on KGW News at Sunrise, which starts Ooh. right now. All right, we start oh. your Monday morning with this beautiful look at the sun coming up over Yaquina Bay in Newport. It is a gorgeous morning out there on the coast. Temperatures here in the valley not looking too bad either oh, this morning. Look at those colors. Yeah. Some people are going to see Rod's oh. forecast for today and go, man, I can't believe it's the first week of summer. But in fact, Rod, today is really the typical day you would expect late June in this area. Yes. Where does he get that knowledge at, we wonder? You, where? my friend. <laughs> How does Drew know this job? Normal high cramming. for this time of the year. Right about 75. That's where we think we'll be generally today. Beautiful morning. No marine push inland. There's the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club out in Aloha. Early morning number 42 degrees out there. Yeah, there are some chilly spots. PDX out along the Columbia 53. We're going 65 at lunchtime, 74 at 5 p.m. I already showed you the shot. It is cloudy up in Cannon Beach, Seaside, Astoria. You folks expected to clear today as well. Here's Chris. All right, let's go ahead and give you the, the uh, look at the roads right now. We'll take you to the west side. Quick look at the sunset. This is out near Washington Park. Is there anybody out there? One, two, three, okay, six, seven cars coming down the hill from the zoo. You get the idea, pretty light volume there. We'll switch gears, take you over to the Lloyd District, I-84, rolling along okay there as well. And the trip out of Clark County is just now getting a little bit busier on I-5 southbound near the Interstate Bridge. Guys. All right, Chris, thank you. We want to check in with some breaking news right now in the Goose Hollow neighborhood of Southwest Portland this morning, where Portland Fire says they have gotten everyone out of an apartment building that caught on fire early this morning. This is near Lincoln High School in Southwest Columbia and 16th. Crews say the fire actually burned the roof and the first floor of the building. It is out now, but if you're driving through this area, you will still probably see a lot of fire trucks on scene while they investigate. I'm pretty upset about it. I think that this is really hurting Oregonians. This walkout is going against our democracy. Rip this bill up and throw it away because it's useless. The debate over cap and trade legislation rages in Salem and lawmakers aren't the only ones getting heated. This was the scene in Salem yesterday. Those demonstrators are against the controversial climate policy that caused Republicans to walk out. And that walkout is continuing today. And people are planning even more protests at the Capitol tomorrow. That's when a coalition of groups will show up demanding Republicans return to Salem. This weekend, Oregon's Republican Party says it's standing by GOP lawmakers. I think that they're doing the right thing. We're staying behind them. Uh, right now, there seems to be an effort underway to take a bill that is going to lay out a plan for 31 years and dramatically increase energy costs, kill jobs. There's just no doubt about it. Dramatically impact industries today. The Senate convened briefly on Sunday, but only for a few minutes because Republicans weren't there. On Saturday, Democrats canceled their planned session and OSP closed the Capitol after a right wing militia group said it was going to attend the demonstrations. You can find continuing coverage on the walkout by going to our website. You can get information about tomorrow's protest as well. We're also going to be talking about this on Sunrise Extra, our streaming show that starts at seven o'clock. So that story will continue to play out today in Salem. Meanwhile, this is a live look from Vancouver where this morning firefighters are trying to figure out what caused the fire that forced 26 people from their homes. So this is another look at that same spot yesterday. The fire started on East 18th near Norris Road and we're told this tall column of black smoke you see here, it could actually be seen throughout the entire city. The fire burned part of a home and a two story duplex. Three dozen firefighters worked to put out the flames Thankfully, no one was hurt. We're working to get more information on the story, including what started the fire and why so many people, again, there were 26 in all, 
that were displaced. Investigators in Deschutes County are looking into what caused a float plane crash. It landed in the Deschutes River, killing the pilot. He's been identified as 63 year old Kevin Padrick. He was living in Sun River, but our news partner, the Oregonian reports, he co-founded Obsidian Financial Group in Lake Oswego. There was one passenger aboard that float plane and that person survived. A man who is accused of running over and killing a bicyclist in southeast Portland will be in court today. That was a look at Nicholas Martinez, who's facing manslaughter, reckless driving and DUI charges. That crash happened on southeast Flavelle Street early yesterday morning. In national news, today the U.S. plans to announce more economic sanctions against Iran just days after calling off what could have been a deadly airstrike. Tracy Potts reports. It's different than that message. Which is? I'm not looking for war. Avoiding war means putting the squeeze on Iran's economy. The U.S. is expected to announce a new round of sanctions today, leaving the door open to talk about shutting down Iran's nuclear program. If you want to talk about it, good. Otherwise, you can live in a shattered economy for a long time to come. President Trump called off an airstrike that the military says would have killed 150 Iranians. Retaliation for Iran shooting down a U.S. drone. Democrats agree it was the right move, but urge caution. It ought to be an international response. It shouldn't be the U.S. acting alone. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is in the Middle East this week trying to drum up support. I hope that the Iranians will understand that the world won't tolerate this. Iran is blaming the U.S. Military experts fear we could be inching toward war. My biggest concern is uh, the president is running out of room, running out of options. And perhaps running out of time. Iran has announced that within days it will exceed the amount of uranium it's allowed to enrich in that nuclear deal. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. President Trump is also delaying a planned nationwide roundup of undocumented immigrants. The president says he called the roundup off for now at the request of Democrats, but he's also giving Congress a two week deadline to find a solution at the border. ICE was supposed to start those roundup efforts yesterday in big cities like Houston, Miami and Los Angeles. The operation targets migrant families that have already received deportation orders. And immigration is sure to come up as Democratic presidential hopefuls face off in their first debate later this week. Over the weekend, the majority of the presidential hopefuls campaigned in South Carolina at the Democrats' annual convention. Contenders shared their message with voters, and it's really a preview of what we can expect Wednesday when they all go head-to-head -head right here on NBC. Lester Holt gives us the details. Coming to you from Miami as we gather for the first big event of this election cycle, the Democratic debates, 20 candidates over two nights, same stage, really the first chance for American voters to get to know these folks and to hear from them over a couple of nights, see how they contrast to each other and see how well they defend their big ideas. We'll be covering it all and of course the big buildup as many of them will likely make news between now and then. We'll see you from there. Time now for your morning rush and a police officer in Missouri was shot and killed when he was called out to a food mart over someone trying to cash a bad check. Michael Langsdorf responded to the call yesterday afternoon and was shot just five minutes later. He died at the hospital. A suspect is in custody and a press conference is planned for this morning to release more information into how this happened. All right, take a look at this tornado that was caught on camera moving through South Bend, Indiana yesterday. It destroyed a daycare and downed trees and power lines. Fortunately, though, no reports of any injuries or deaths. And we're learning more about that skydiving plane that crashed just after taking off on Oahu Friday, killing all 11 people. Back in 2016, this same plane was involved in another incident where the pilot lost control, causing the plane to roll several times before landing. Investigators are trying to determine if that prior incident played a role in this weekend's crash. And if you're taking a summer road trip, some good news at the gas pump. The average price across the country has dropped 11 cents over the past couple of weeks to 2.73 a gallon, though. Here at home, it's a lot higher in Oregon, where the average price in Portland is at 3.28. Eugene has the cheapest average gas at 3.11 a gallon. All right, a group of Thai soccer players and their coach are marking the one-year anniversary of when they became trapped in a cave. 
they did it with this marathon run this weekend. Around 4,000 people took part. The race raised money to improve conditions at that cave complex where the team was trapped for two weeks. And that's your morning rush. Oh, we have to take a look back at a really fun weekend. Hot air balloons took to the sky above Tigard this weekend. A lot of people came out to Cook Park to check out all the festivities. It was a little bit windy on Saturday and Sunday, but plenty of those colorful balloons still took flight. Rod and Nina were out there broadcasting live on Friday, meeting a lot of people, eating pancakes, yeah. flipping them. There <laughs> yeah. was a lot of stuff going on there. I didn't get one pancake, but really? you know who did? <laughs> that guy. And I didn't even surprise put me. syrup or butter on I took that baby, I folded it in half, and I ate it, and it was yes, delicious. You did. Fluffy, golden. It was just like that. <laughs> See, I would have thought uh, yesterday, or Saturday, and even yesterday, too breezy, too windy for balloons, but I guess it's the direction. It's yeah. the direction, and yeah. And that was the key on Friday, the, the direction of wind would to push the balloons over downtown Portland, which is a no-go. They need those balloons to move more south. to the south, away from the heart of the metro. So and they have somewhere to land. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm also we assuming saw, he's yeah. not wearing a jacket this morning because you ate too many pancakes. So <gasps> you can't get the jacket maybe over the oh. area where the pancakes oh. sit. He's uh, coming at you hot this morning, Rod. I'm 